everyone and welcome to Get On Extra. We're not too far away from Christmas and we're not too far away from a bumper race day on Saturday. All across the country we're racing at Eagle Farm, Mooney Valley and Royal Randwick. And I'm joined by a very good team in the studio today. BZ, looking forward to the weekend. Yes. We've definitely sort of gone back a cog as yes. far as the racing is concerned, but still plenty of winners to be found. Ten races at the Valley, that's where my focus is largely and hopefully we can find a few winners. I think the highest rated race, Matty, is like a benchmark mm. 78. So. They're getting lower grade horses, but still big prize money on offer. And if you've got a horse going around, you can pick up a big check. Hopefully we can steer a punters into a few winners. Maddie, yeah. you're uh, celebrated a birthday in the Ooh. week, so happy birthday. <laughs> yes. It's the birthday that keeps on giving, isn't it? It is the birthday that keeps on giving. And uh, just another year wiser, apparently. <laughs> apparently. But look, if, uh, if I do tend to have an existential crisis sitting in this chair, of course the great <laughs> yes. Simon Marshall usually uh, sits here. And if I do say something absolutely ridiculous, it's just, it's not me. Simon, <laughs> no, not you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, talking about SD, we're not joined by SD, we're not joined by Grace, but we are joined by another fantastic member of our team, Nick Ashman, comes yes. in from Sydney. Morning, guys. Uh, great to be with you as well. Uh, fantastic cards, I thought, right across Australia on Saturday. Stakes racing popping up in various states. And Maddie, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'd love to hear about the things you've learned in 2023, and I might take a couple of tips going into 2024. <laughs> well, First tip I'll give you is never sit in a chair after one SD Marshall. Oh, oh. exactly right. Well, the, the one thing is, as a, as a punter, uh, you, you just never stop learning, do you, BZ? You're always <laughs> learning something. If you're not learning, you're standing still. If you're standing still, you're getting beaten. Let's so uh, hopefully we can get a few winners. Though, yeah, let's it? hope so. Well, let's kick things off with our early cash segment. We're going to look for our best bets across the country from races one to three. We're going to Head to BZ and uh, look at what you're thinking at the Valley. I like one in race number one, but we'll keep that up the sleeve for a little bit later because it's my best. But I did like Keen Enough, who was unlucky the uh, last start at the Valley over the 9.55. It was a little bit slow out and just got into an awkward position, had to switch across heels and was just narrowly beaten. Whereas I think today, with a run under the belt, can be a lot more positive and I think it's a competitive price. So happy to take the price about Keen Enough in race number two. He's probably got the best of the barrier draw against yes. Rhetorical too, who's drawn a little bit uh, wider. I found one at a bit of value in uh, race number three, a Cradle of Life, who had a good little pipe opener there at Sandown, was going through the line for Richard Lamming, gets a bit of extra trip here, a couple of scratchings in the race as well. You're getting around the $7 mark for Cradle of Life in race three. You also like something in race number two, Nick. Yeah, sorry about that. Just lost you for a moment there. I wasn't sort of just trying to flick my ears for fun, guys. But, uh, hey, I, I agree with BZ about Keen Enough. It was desperately unlucky first up, second up, second prep. But I just thought there was some each way value around here. Number six, Rose Tycoon. Look, she's I, I, looking through her data. I reckon she's a proper 1,000-metre horse on a turf track. She's won up to 1,200. But that was at the Ballarat Synthetic Track, which I'm always a little cautious about using as a guide to what really suits a horse best. She's placed two from three here at the Valley, so she's OK. And she just needs a little bit of luck in run to find a bum early doors and I think she'll be very strong in the business end guys so uh, race two number six uh, Rose Tycoon $18 each way beautiful price there you thought you were coming into this show with a bit of value and then Nick's just yes. scammed not you yes exactly and with three or four scratchings out of the race I went for uh, mine's gone from double figures to seven dollars and I have been completely gazumped <laughs> but that's why we love uh, the ash man <laughs> well I'm um, playing in Randwick I really liked this horse the last time I, I'm a dirty rascal he's put up two really good runs his latest run was a run where he was able to run and hit the line strong. I actually thought he probably should have won the race. You're taking a lot shorter than the $18 that we took from him last time. But race two, number one, I'm a dirty rascal. He's got his hoof on the till. I think he will be not too far off of a win. As we head into Mooney Valley, this is our best bets from races four and beyond. I'm going to kick things off. Nice I know early, you're. <laughs> I know you're with the same horse as well. Dark Halo just looks a perfect race for this galloper. Yeah, he's trialled up very nice on two occasions here in Victoria. I know his last run was a little bit underwhelming, but he looks well positioned from an inside draw. I thought he was the best bet of the afternoon. I'm very keen to be with him. I think he's a progressive three-year-old who'll get to a better level than this, and he should be winning. Would you like it? Yeah, then, I also yeah. liked him. I thought the race set up perfectly for him. I love the way that they've given him a little freshen up in between, and the fact is, is he's got the best form leading into this. There's a couple of horses that are going well. Get along is in the race as well, and our Crackling Rosie also have good form, but um, I'm happy to stick with Dark Halo as well. Devil's Advocate, uh, yes. will it get round the valley okay, Dark Halo? It's quite oh. a 
gross looking loping sort of an animal. Oh, I'm hoping, Maddie. I didn't want you to sort of uh, rain on our parade no, this early no. in the show, <laughs> but like I thought there was good speed from Git Along and also our cl Cracklin Rosie. I thought it follows the speed mm. from that inside draw. It'll get the opportunity to just um, park him behind. Hopefully, he gets to split through late. The way that he trialled at Cranbourne, he's uh, going very well, the horse. Nick, you and I have ended up on the same horse, Union Army. What do you like about him? Yeah, I thought uh, Call the Union, number 10 in race uh, four, isn't it, uh, Lizzie? Uh, really unlucky she was last time out uh, behind Dublin Journal over the 2,000 metres at Caulfield. That was just a third run back from a spell. She'll strip fed her. She's having a second run now at 2,000 metres, which I think will have a prime for the event. She's only been to the races once, fourth up from a spell, and that was in her first preparation, and it was her first go beyond 1,600 metres when she stretched right out to 2,200. So I reckon she'll go to a career peak on Saturday. And in terms of will she get round the valley, as Maddie just asked about BZ's tip, well, she hasn't been there before, but her dad, Seamus Award, won a pretty handy race there about a decade ago. You also have a, a couple of tips in the next race. Yeah, that's right. Uh, in the next race, in race uh, five at, um, at Mooney Valley, we've got uh, two plays here. Number four, Port Albert, for a very much informed Nick Ryan, and also uh, number 10, Moon and Black. These two horses between them have had 12 starts around the valley for five wins and three minor placings. All their best figures are at this track, and I just think over this short course trip, they'll be the ones to beat in race five. So back them both, you get about 375 on the dividend if either one wins. For me, that's the uh, well, one of the best bets of the day. What's your thoughts? Oh, I actually didn't mind Wolflands in that race first up. Um, I know he's mm. sort of big odds, but I just thought he might fly under the radar here. He trialled very well for the uh, new stable, formerly with Julian Welsh, now with the Lindsay Park team, and off a couple of slick trials, I thought it could run well. Maddie, you like a horse in race number 666, six, six, south of Houston. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, it's named after the street in uh, New York, so it's south of Houston. Oh, yeah. Yes, south of Houston. A very quick horse will go straight to the front there at the Valley, racing really well. Dominated last time at Sandown, will go close. And what about the format of the race too? Running by, finish second to it. Uh, it absolutely bolted in after absolutely. having no luck last week. And there's been many winners coming out of that form. She's flying the mare. Absolutely. So these, my tip, they're, they're the three in a row. So this is like a Gatling gun here, <laughs> folks. If I can be like Simon Marshall for a moment. Now, folks, listen in here. We've got South of Houston, race six, number six. Race seven, number ten, Wacker Manor. Second up for Luke Curry. Isn't Come it? on, man. And race ten, number ten, Stupendo. has been runner-up its last two. Has Damien Lane last race before Christmas. Come on, man. I was just wondering if you could repeat race seven, number ten, because it's actually... Yeah, well, <laughs> you can replace the WH with an F, <laughs> and uh, if you want to be correct, but I can't, I can't call races and say that word, the naughty word. I'm not saying it because I swear. I'll do it. Yeah, no, we, <laughs> no we, we've, on, Nick, we've already been it. taken off also, here once this year. You've taken the uh, Simon Marshall to another level. You've even got the shorts on, Matty. <laughs> yeah, look, I've even got the look. look. <laughs> 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 Right, oh, right. sacred pins. <laughs> Haven't we lost the plot? The end of this. On this that, is On that note, let's head to Gels on the shelf. Wow. <laughs> It's the perfect time for gel from the shelf. <laughs> oh, Where have you been well, hiding? Yes, well, we talked about Maddie celebrating a birthday and we thought we'd take a little bit of a trip down memory lane because he all, hasn't always been <laughs> the number one race caller. There was a time when he was a very young man. Take a look at this. Six barrier trials, six finalists in a race caller's talent quest run by radio station 2KY and the Australian Jockey Club. Carla's dream from the inside is one of the best to begin. I'd like to call over the PA at Flemington, that'd be good. And then a Melbourne Cup would be good too, yeah. Beautiful start by Matthew Hill. <laughs> ah, some of your best work there, Matty. That's outstanding. But I did also notice during the week that um, you've even featured on some PlayStation games and Xbox games. Have a look at this. It's race on here at Woodwood. <laughs> Fluffy interest is oh, off wow. to a fabulous start. Others would be happy with themselves. 250 out and it's gambling diva head and head with so the monkey. How long yeah. did you have to sit in a studio yeah. and record you know the what? voices for this? So, and um, anyone who's done a video game will, will testify. That was the hardest gig I've ever done. They give you a booklet about that thick with every horse name and, and expression that you could use. And on day one of the recording, I got through it and they said, that's fantastic. You have to come back on day two and scream every name out because that's the end of the race, ah, you know. And so you had to have the, a, a library of... That's right. It was impossible. <laughs> Absolutely impossible. As, a, as for the first video, thank uh, goodness for the human evolution and a few things dropped and uh, here we are today. Oh, 
oh dear, that's the first thing I noticed that man. Very high voice. <laughs> 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 We've got Lizzie going against you already with Traffic Warden. Who I know he's a short quote, but I think he's the type of horse you're going to be seeing featuring more of the um, competitive two-year-old races. Is doing it pretty well. A couple of reminders and Traffic Warden won by a length and a quarter. She wins. I have a good day. Very keen on running by on Saturday. Race four, number eight, running by. I'm also in agreement with the boys. Running by moves up on the outside of Rumbled again and it's got it. Running by wins. Commander Harry, race six, number six at Caulfield, third up, ready to go close. Commander Harry over the top will win. Commander Harry up the 2,000 metres. Three, number 10, is my Saturday best, Zephoria. Zephoria going after Rocketeer Girl. Hide your heart, they hit it. <laughs> oh, do me out of this. Dalalat in the last, number two. Dalalat in front from Contemporary and Dalalat won the last. Wow, a couple of winners there. Well done, buddy. Yeah, and Simo's exactly. left us with a big double figure winner oh, there with no, Dalalat. an extra octave there in the <laughs> Commander <laughs> Harry. Oh, I mean, just a little bit of extra guttural uh, <laughs> exercise there for sure. And it was set up beautifully <laughs> for him too, wasn't it? They it was spread out. Blue <laughs> Cup uh, went out clear. It was an exciting and race. It was a good race. Yeah. yeah very good race. We've got some good racing uh, in Brisbane this weekend, and there's some. Um, terrific two-year-old racing. We've got the BJ McLaughlin heading into what is the Magic Millions Carnival. If you cast your memory back uh, Maddie, a couple of years ago, Cool and Gadda was able to do yeah. the double. So it's a, a really important race meeting for these oh, for two sure. Oh, for sure. And of course, we've got the Magic Millions coming up in January. So these are all lead-up races, very important races. They're probably worth more than their actual prize money. Absolutely. Let's kick things off with you, Nick. Uh, you're with Mashani Gangster mm. up at Eagle Farm. Yeah, that's right. It's a thousand metre race. This horse sort of um, took on those Group Two sort of 1400 metre events back last winter. Now resumes here back at a thousand metres. Uh, sectionals show that this horse is a real sort of speed galloper. It's only had two first up runs. Broke the maiden on debut by three and a half lengths at the sunny coast, and then was three wide, no cover. Uh, first up last preparation at Doom at over 1,200 metres. I just think soft gate, 1,000 metres, it'll be humming to the line and you're getting pretty much double figures there, guys. So great bet each way for mine. I'm with race eight, number six, Zarastro in the Favillon. I think he's going to be very hard to beat. He's up against horses like Spacewalk, Natuno, Depaul. They're all running really well. Even F Troop hit the line strongly last time out. But he's absolutely flying at the moment for Tony Gollan and Anne Jones, and I'm happy to go his way. You're in the last. Yeah, I'm going with Go Wanji, who's an interesting horse because he generally shows no speed. He'll be out the back near last. He's had two runs back at 1,200 metres this preparation. I think he's been sort of waiting now to get to the seven furlongs, out to the 1,400. He'll be a long way off them, but he loves the big straight at Eagle Farm, watching him to be warming up late, and I think he can gobble them up in the concluding stages. So go Wanji in the last race, 10, number one. We haven't had a tip in the BJ McLaughlin, but Storm Boy looks incredibly hard to beat. I think he's about $1.55. He's up against a, a last start winner, Astapor, who's by Tassort. Um, just making a mention to him, Gay Waters and Adrian Bott are absolutely flying with their two-year-olds, and he is another one who looks very, very hard to beat. If you're interested in the two-year-old racing, let's have a look at our best bets elsewhere. And Nick, you're going to kick things off over in WA. Yeah, that's right. I've been doing the sectionals over in WA for a couple of clients. Mm. And uh, race three, we've got a horse called Snippy Witch who got a long way back, uh, first up from a spell, but produced the best last eight, six, four and 200 metres of the entire meeting. There were some pretty handy horses running that day. So draws barrier one now on Saturday. That might work a tad against this galloper, but I tell you what, if it gets clear, it's got a monster turn of foot and I think it'll be a stakes horse in time. So Snippy Witch for me. Not a single Zach on Happy as Larry? No, it's got to beat happy as Larry. Larry's not that happy at the moment, uh, Lizzie, so I'll take him on. <laughs> All right. I'm going to Wyong, uh, race seven, number two. Little Contro uh, from the Joe Pride stable did a great job last time out. At, we'll be back, which is a little bit of a question mark at Wyong, but the sectionals that this galloper ran, I think that you're going to be seeing him uh, figure in the finish in a lot of races. We've got country racing at sale on Saturday to run alongside the Valley and it's only a seven race card but there's some massive fields and I thought Corrupted would be very hard to beat in race number two. There's no markets up at this time stage when we're filming. I'm expected the horse to be favourite. 
Um, it comes out of a very strong maiden at Geelong last start where it hit the line from back in the field on a day that was very difficult to make ground. Now it's drawn barrier one going up to 1,400 metres. I think it settles a lot closer. And for the Freedman team, I think it's a nice horse and should be winning. Can't we find a venue at Christmas time? We'll, we'll be betting on the Sydney to Hobart oh. yacht race next. Oh, come on, Maddie, not the Sydney to Hobart. <laughs> <laughs> well, it takes two days to get paid out. That's if you're back the winner. That's the problem. <laughs> Let's have a look at Drum Kit, where we've got to find our best place plays over the weekend. And Nick, you're going to kick things off for us. Yeah, down at uh, Mooney Valley, race eight, I thought uh, down O'Sullivan's mare, one last kiss who uh, has been doing a terrific job of late without actually breaking through, only broken through once recently. But she looks a really good place bet at $2.70, guys. She'll be my anchor. Uh, I'm up next at Randwick Race 4, number one, Conrad. He looked really disappointing last time out, but he lost his shoe at the start. He's plagued with feet problems, and I think that now that they've got him back on track, and if you go off of his previous trials leading into that first up run, he's a horse that is definitely able to run really well, especially with a bit of sting out of the ground. So I'm Race 4, number one, Conrad, and Maddie, you are at the Valley. Yes, I thought I'd find one completely uh, outside the box here. Ooh. Mr Blackwood, you're getting about 5.50 the place. Yeah. It hasn't missed a drum uh, second up in its life after a duck egg last time will improve up to longer. Private jumbo for me in the last. Drawn barrier one, should get into a nice position and around $2.15 I think it's a great place bet. Um, there's a few winning chances in that, but I, I think it's a fairly safe place bet in the last. Jeez, we've gone very juicy with our place bets in the last, but now it's our favourite part of the show, from the Hilltops. Ooh. Yes, we go to the Red Bull Challenge here in Sweden, ladies and gentlemen. And, well, if you thought the rail was out of fair way at Flemington for rapid racing, well, it's out of fair way here. Because have a look at the track we've got here for the Red Bull Challenge. <laughs> and this is the pink team. Can they survive? <laughs> oh. No, they can't. They've been ducked. They're gone. Look at the lifesavers. They're on guard oh, as well. That's oh. basically a monocycle that was never going to do it. Never going to do it indeed. This team looks a bit more professional. That looks like BZ in the front oh. seat. Over the first, over the second, down! Gone they go. Can someone do this? We need a professional outfit and this is not going to work at all. This looks like a plastic car that's not going to survive. They come to the first, they've got to go surely. After the first, they're almost there. And down they go into the drink. Now let's see team number five. A little, well, we've always been talking about boat races on this show. <laughs> and here they are as they come towards halfway. This oh. is a lot more professional. Straight as a gun oh. barrel through the line. Oh. And they've done it. The Red Bull hey. Challenge hey. there in Sweden. <laughs> Only in Sweden, Is I'd that suggest. where uh, Simon Marshall is, practising for a, that? There's a rough week? chance. Well, we've got to, we, he's making a comeback, as we know, for the big race in Newmarket uh, later next year. Don't he's getting play. fit. Now, apparently he's, he's on some beach, isn't he? In Mallorca with the sure. with the budgies. No, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm <laughs> not sure. Would, you would want to be on a beach in Mallorca this time of year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes I look like I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to a break. Welcome back to Get On Extra. We're looking at some best bets at Randwick this weekend. We're into the benchmark racing and we're going to kick things off with you, Nick. You're playing in race two at Randwick, a horse called Daniloquin. Yeah, it's already been backed. It was $51 in early markets, all the way in now to about $18 uh, with sports bet. Uh, but this gallop is now fourth up from a spell and should be ready to put its best foot forward. It, it always takes a bit of racing. I believe that little bit of cut in the ground will suit this galloper. It's had three runs back from a spell, mostly on dry tracks, a soft five in the middle of them. The track is drying out up here, but given the amount of rain we've had, I think this is the peak performance for, for this galloper and I expect it to run top three, so still a good each way bet. Nick, talking about the track up there, you were saying there's been a fair amount of rain. What are the conditions to be expected on Saturday? Well, it all depends, Lizzie, on what happens on Friday afternoon and Friday night. There's a little bit of rain potentially forecast, but I'd say if it doesn't come, we should get back into that soft five, soft six range pretty comfortably. Uh, we may even get dry, but there's a lot of humidity in the air and those that understand the meteorology, as our good friend Brent Zarafa <laughs> does, uh, you'll note that when it's humid, it doesn't dry out as fast. So we'll see what unfolds. You learn something new yes, every day. But, uh, <laughs> now, I'm going with Valiancy. I thought it was a terrific run last time out in uh, race number six. Craig Williams making the trip up to uh, Sydney to ride a number of horses uh, throughout the program. I thought this was one of his uh, better chances. I thought it would be uh, very hard to beat. Hit the line very strongly last time in... A, up against the boys, now dropping back to Mayor's company, was narrowly beaten behind Legio 10, looks well placed in this event race number Talking six. about jockeys travelling around, we heard about Blake Shin also, he's yes. you know, travelling around, there's 
plenty of movement this time yep. of year. Damien Lane's still in WA, so jockeys moving around trying to uh, secure some good rides, especially for the up-and-coming Magic Millions Carnival. You're with Stromboli in race number seven. He's been racing so consistently, Nick. Yeah, he has, um, Lizzie, and, and look, his sectionals late. I know he finished eighth last time out, but he ran sensational late splits and couldn't have done anything more from where he was. I like the fact that they're keeping him at this grade with this low weight of 54 kilos. They've also elected to claim with Jet Stanley in the saddle, now down to 52 kilos. I do think horses that stick to the fence in Sydney will be advantaged on Saturday at Randwick, and I think this horse just hugs the fence. You're going to have your heart in the mouth over the last sort of two or 300 metres because he's going to need a split. He's going to be zigzagging and zags Zigging. But if he gets it, it'll be very hard to hold out. Not good when you're zag zigging, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on with the, uh, the hat there? You're sort of uh, Santa oh, Cross with Peter Pan. Yeah, well, I, I mean, four months ago, I was wearing a top hat at Royal Ascot. Things have gone downhill dramatically. <laughs> now my career's yeah. heading, Lizzie. You, you just, you just you're sitting in the SD Marshall suit. Yeah. You've just showed your legs on TV yep. and we showed you pubescent. Yeah, this, is, this is not going to wear, is it? <laughs> yes. no, All right, I'm with the next two at Radwick. I'm with Sinawan. Uh, he's been racing so well in really tough races. Like He's been racing in million-dollar races, drawing bad gates. And I reckon this is the first time I've found him in a race that he could comfortably be placed in the first half of the field and be able to show that really strong turn of foot that he's got. So I'm really happy to be with him at the each way odds race eight, number two, Sinawan. And another horse that raced really well first up was Aristonis, race nine, number four. I think he's going to be very hard to beat in race number nine. He's going to be hitting the line strongly. He is a back marker. So again, as Nick was mentioning, you've got to have to have your heart in your mouth. But I think he's got the best turn of foot in the race. So he's the horse that I want to be with. He's actually my Saturday best for the weekend. And Zed, you are going to bring us home, hopefully, yes. the last race on the card. Dennistar, a horse who's done a lot of its racing in Victoria and was quite impressive at uh, Kyneton two starts back and then went up to Kembla Grange, led and absolutely bolted in on wet ground last start. 1,400 to 1,200 is its sweet spot. Lands right in the middle here at 1,300 metres. And if, Nick, we get a situation where it is um, advantageous to be up on speed. I'd imagine Danistar is going to be flying along near the front of the field and might be hard to run down in the last. Did you have an opinion in that race? Yeah, I tend to agree with you, BZ. And I think also if the pattern unfolds as, as we're sort of predicting it will to be on speed, then horses that can go forward and use their natural turn of foot will probably firm in the marketplace. So uh, right behind you there, buddy. That was our Randwick preview. We're going to have a look at our Sunday session. We're going to try and find some best bets on Sunday. There's a few sort of um, questionable ones in this Sunday session. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to kick things off with Larry. What are you doing and where are you going? Is it Sunday? Yeah, I'm going up to Taree. <laughs> I was wondering why you were questioning me. Normally it's me uh, carrying the blowtorch you reply. But no, I've, I've played straight and narrow. <laughs> yeah, I was confused that it wasn't me that was in trouble. So um, race four at Taree on Sunday, Lizzie. Uh, right down towards the bottom, number 13, Opus, for Kristen Buchanan. She's a great trainer. This horse has only had two starts in its career, either side of a spell. Trialled really well, won a trial by about four lengths at Newcastle coming into this preparation. Got a mile back at Tongue Curry and came widest on the turn in what was, I thought, a run of a lot of hit and merit. Now pops up to the mile for the first time in its career. Out of a Carnegie mare, won't mind a bit of juice in the track. They haven't got any odds up at the moment, but... I'll be betting as soon as they do. <laughs> Very good. Well, I'm going to the EPL because um, oh. I couldn't find anything at Tari, Tunkari or wherever else they're racing on Sunday. I'm with Liverpool to beat Arsenal. Um, they just had a lovely big pipe opener against West Ham, so I'm happy to Beautiful. stick with the Reds. <laughs> Matty? Yes, Metropolitan Greyhound Racing at Sandown. <laughs> oh, we all love go. it on a Sunday afternoon. Hard press will jump towards oh. the front here. Loves it up near the speed uh, and will be hard to beat race six, number one. Of course, Sunday night, Santa is coming. That's a moral uh, BZ. And at this stage, uh, your market is Undy 7 to 2 for a Ooh. present, deodorant 4s and socks 3 to 1. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it's going to be a terrific Christmas. <laughs> Look, no Victorian racing on Sunday. We've got Sunday off and we've also got Christmas Day off. So who doesn't mind a Sunday session that rolls into Tuesday? Oh, because okay. back in the day, if you didn't mind a party, those things could Sounds eventuate. Like but uh, anyway, <laughs> moving on. Bold Soul, race one, number one. I liked at uh, Caulfield. So pretty keen to be with it. I think it'll be very hard <laughs> very to beat. Very impressed think, you've done the form. I think they went up at around 3.40. Um, it was a good early price. Right, very good.
Very impressive. You'll be rolling. First on very Boxing Day. You're You'll very be rolling organized. into Boxing Day. I'll be rolling into Boxing Day. Don't worry about that. I'll be in a food coma by then. Now we've, and also a, we might need at this time of year a back sack and crack, Lizzie. What a segue. What a segue. Talk for yourself. <laughs> okay. Nick, let's kick things off with you. What do you want to back this weekend at the Double Figure Odds? Yeah, I'm with Rose Tycoon, as I mentioned earlier. I just think uh, with uh, the rail in the true position, they should be able to make some ground at Mooney Valley on Saturday. Each way her at $18. I'm with Sinawan at Randwick. As I said, it's the first time he's found a race that he's going to be very competitive in and needs drawn perfectly. Cradle of life, uh, $7. was about $12 when the acceptances came out, so there has been support. Wolflands is a Mooney Valley specialist, formerly with... Um, Julian Welsh, now with the Lindsay Park team, trolled up very nice at Werribee, and I think it's just got under the guard of the market so far at $16. What are we laying this weekend? Oh, Nick! <laughs> yeah, I, when you made it your best bet in Queensland, I thought to myself, well, this will make the back end of the show interesting, <laughs> you know, even if the rest of it's been boring. Uh, I'm laying it, Lizzie. I think Space Ward's a pretty handy galloper. And at the weights, I've got to be with Spacewalk. Zerastro's got to come back in trip. There's pace engaged, so I'm going to lay it. I, I think he's a pretty handy galloper, but he's got no BMT Spacewalk, so I'm happy to stick with Zerastro. I'm with Waihaha Falls, only because the map, he's going to be back in the field. He's got a great turn of speed, but uh, I think that he is going to find it tough. A uh, Harbin for me, D drawn wide, which is tricky at the Valley and a big weight as well. Yeah, Fearless Rider won last start at the Valley and I know she gets Damien Lane in the saddle, but I thought it was a much weaker race that she won against Mayor's Company. Now she's taking on the boys and a lot deeper contest, so happy to take on Fearless Rider as favourite in race number nine. Let's find our best bets for oh, the oh, Nick. oh, Nick, you've been brave. Yeah. Yeah, I've been really brave. I'm not going to overcomplicate it. This thing's, uh, a, a, well, I think a good thing anyway. What it did on debut, it, overall time was nothing flash, but those late splits were so good that it raced away from its opposition. You can have almost six lengths back to the third horse. Aristonis for you? Aristonis on, on top. Yeah, 10 bucks. Yeah, I, look, I think he's going to be very hard to beat, but... Maddie? Probably should have made him my value. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you never know. Uh, South of Houston for me, what do they say? Jump, lead, win. South of Houston. I'm hoping Dark Halo just parks in behind the speed and hits the line strongly there. Yeah, there we go. Well, we had a, a terrific weekend last weekend. We saw Ollie go out with those three magnificent yeah, wins. Not only that, we had a bit of a connection to get on because the great Hutchbuster is yes. a part owner of Munamek and it was almost, it was a fairy tale, but it really had the cherry on top, the fact that there was that really strong racing connection. Oh, for sure. And, I mean, as Darren McCauley said in the call, the racing gods spoke, didn't they? It was just an extraordinary yeah. moment. It's amazing how things can fall into place. And the build of momentum from winning race seven and then race eight and then for him to come out and win the final race on the program, I think it's something that everyone will remember for a long time. And probably a hangover that Hutch will be nursing for a while for as well. For sure, yeah. <laughs> now, it, wouldn't be, uh, it would be it would be remiss of us at Christmas time not to say Merry Christmas to everybody and thank you for watching us. This is uh, episode 21 of Get On Extra and they said it would never last. <laughs> and, uh, of course, Simo, usually in the chair, would give his joke. So here's one for you. What's the difference between the normal alphabet and the Christmas alphabet? I don't know. There's no L. Oh, ah, very good, Matty. Very good. Well. to be as bad as Simo, so there you go. What about the audible groan from the staff behind know, the cameras? I know. Nick, thank you. are a good race Thanks caller, so Matty. much, Nick. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks for having me on your show. Merry Christmas to everyone tuning in. Yes, and hopefully we back plenty of winners. Looking yes. forward to Merry Christmas to you and to yes. your family and you to your end of the year. And we're going to see everyone in the new year. For sure. Can't wait, Cannot really. wait. Well hopefully led. We'll be back. Well led, you. We'll be back, good boys. job. Good job. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Happy holidays. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.